Welcome back to the charismatic voice. Yes, we are back for some more Ozzy. And in particular, we're going to be listening to the version of the song that features Randy Rhodes, the greatest guitar player that I have yet to hear. I want to give a shout out to our subscribers who recommended and thumbs up this song in the comments of our last Ozzy video. It was the most recommended, so let's get to it. Ooh. That's a nice chord progression. Whoa. <laughs> I was thinking, hey, this is just an album cover, and then there was some sort of animation in there that, that caught me off guard. Uh, this is such a cool intro. The chord progression almost feels like it's weaving and going unexpected directions. It doesn't really resolve the way I expect it to, and it, it definitely goes through a lot of different chords on the way there. It's, uh, yeah, it's really cool. So I'm gonna go back again. It's meandering in a lot of ways, but actually has a direction. Whoa. There, there are definitely some interesting things happening in the time signatures here. Um, super curious. And I have to say, um, this is obviously I've heard Ozzy a few different times now. He's just got such a staple sound and I was really tired. I, I was tired of not understanding the reference when people said, oh, he's got this in common with Ozzy or that singer has this in common with Ozzy. I'm so glad that I now have that sonic reference built into my brain. And I can reference Ozzy now. It's cool. Um, it definitely is a very forward sound. It's almost grating. And I don't think it's the kind of thing that I would listen to put me to sleep, right? It's, it doesn't have beauty as I would qualify it personally in the tone. However, I can greatly, greatly appreciate it. It is very distinct. It is clear. Uh, it gets a message across extremely well. So I, I'm gonna go back and listen to his vocal entrance. I think it's around here. Oh yeah, that was such a cool shift. I think this is in 7-8. <laughs> this time signature was driving me crazy. And I think that's partly also because they've split up the subdivision of the 7-8. So you, it has essentially different groupings of four and three. I think we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, 
or maybe it's four first. Anyway, obviously it's driving me crazy, but there's a seven, eight time signature underneath. I'll try and count it out. Gosh, that's weird. <laughs> that's weird and disjointed. Ugh. That that goes with the whole madman thing. Who would write a song in 7-8? <laughs> it, it happens sometimes, and it's really cool when it does, but man. It is just not one of those time signatures that I feel like I can bob my head to. It doesn't have the regularity of it that a lot of other time signatures have built in. So it feels disjointed, perfect for the diary of a madman. So Ozzy's vocal production to me sounds like it's extremely forward. Um, it's almost the antithesis of operatic production. A lot of times operatic production is all about loft and um, there was a big split at one point when they started talking about like more forward singing that was more of a pop trend at one point and then that a lot of other styles sort of evolved from that as well. Anyhow, it's very, very forward. Like if I were to take um, like a, a metal plate and just put it across my hands, it would go basically through my nose. It's got a lot of nasality in it and it's all just focused in this part, very forward of the face without much openness in the back of the laryngeal area, in the back of the pharynx, essentially. So um, I'm going to keep going, but if you can, try and mimic the sound that he's making and notice if you feel it in a similar area. When we talk about a sound being somewhere, we're talking about sort of the resonance, where it hangs out uh, within the vocal tract on the way out, where that resonance is happening. And sometimes you can feel little buzzy spots in common if you're trying to make a similar sound to someone else. So look for that sort of sympathetic vibration if you're trying to sing along with him. So following up on that last comment of the really forward placement, different vowels can encourage different placements. So an E vowel is going to be your most forward E, right? If you, if you go, go E and almost try and sound like a wicked witch, that's going to be your crazy forward placement. It's hard to get that same kind of witchy feel and bright forward sensation. If you do an ooh vowel, for example, ooh, or even o, oh, which would be even further back and dark, oh, right? That o is are naturally gonna have a lot more space back here. Uh, and these things are all influenced a lot by um, the shape of your tongue and essentially how it propels the sound waves in your mouth. So uh, if you're still looking for that feeling in common with Ozzy, try singing along all on an e vowel. Um, and if you want to compare a big difference and not be able to get to that Aussie spot, go with a really dark, oh, kind of like, oh, very swallowed kind of, oh, tall vowel. Uh, Aussie, if you're just listening to him and not trying to find that sympathetic feeling, you'll notice that he really has bright ease and tends to 
tilt his vowels. So color them a little bit towards E's. Even an A ah is going to be a very forward A ah instead of a A. Ah, it'll be A, ah, which is really forward and it's closed a lot of the space in the back off. We'll go back a little bit so you can try some E's along with this. Say, that was really good control on that decrescendo. It is hard to hold on to a note and very slowly go soft on it. That's a, a decrescendo. A crescendo is when you grow louder. And by the way, um, uh, decrescendo looks like a bird's beak closing and a crescendo looks like a bird's beak opening in case you want to know what that looks like in music notation, or music notation format. Uh, I'm gonna go back one more time. He does, it's hard to control a decrescendo and he does a very nice job here. A lot of times when people are working on decrescendos, they will waver on pitch. Um, it's natural for when you get louder for pitch to raise a little bit and then when you get softer for a pitch to fall a little bit. And that has to do with the air pressure underneath here and having to essentially regulate and compensate for differences in air pressure as you change your volume. So just listen to Zee Crescendo one more time and notice that he's not going flat on it as it goes on. This is so cool how they're bringing in some classical instruments in here as well with the strings. But I want to go back because there are some very interesting things. Further. Yeah, oh, the pitch bin there. Oh, man. It, it's, it's so cringeworthy. It makes me cringe, that pitch bend in there. This is one of those things that Randy Rhodes does. He's so good with pitch binges and pitch binges, pitch bends. And it induces a lot of emotional reaction for me. Faden of these string instruments in orchestra. Wow. That this section is haunting, and I think that really is going with the lyrics here, 
we have these choir oohs and ahs that are in there, and it feels almost like we've gone into some sort of cathedralish space with the the verb and how it's shifted. Um, and then it asks, uh, could I mistake myself for someone who lived behind my eyes? A sickened mind and spirit, the mirror tells me lies, right? This, the voices in here and the way it feels like they're starting to swirl around, um, it has that sort of horror feeling to it a little bit. Ah, oh, interesting. This whole section, it feels like there's a swirling of sounds around and there's a surround sound um, thing that's happening with the voices being a little more panned out to the sides and Ozzy's voice is dead in the center. Um, it almost has a certain gravity towards it as well. Like wondering if this is the end of this madman possibly. There's, ah, yeah, there's a very... A strong seriousness to it and I think it's very important throughout this song to realize that it is about mental health and that that is an extremely serious thing that people need to care for. I'm a very very strong supporter of finding help when you need it and if somebody is in trouble please help them find help there are tons and tons of resources. We've listed it on the channel many, many times. Um, and in addition, it's important, I think, to just build your mental health up. Even if you're in a great place already, there are all kinds of tips and tricks you can learn um, just to take care of yourself. So um, please, everybody, take very good care of yourself. The swirling gravitas within the instruments and voices here um, remind me of times that I've had that were really dark in life and feel confused and felt like almost like it was trapped inside my own brain. So I greatly appreciate that they're able to capture that feeling in this music. Let's go back a little bit. The drum pattern there uh, reminds me of a military drum pattern or even a um, it has a, a certain ceremonial feel to it as well, which I get. And I think that goes along with this sort of gravitas that's captured in the moment. It feels as though uh, it's almost like we're attending some sort of wake or death or funeral. Such a brilliant transition.
I love the fading in of instruments and out of instruments. Both times where this transition to this darker swirly section and then as it's transitioning out into a more metal rock section, uh, the transitions here are great. They're brilliant. They're so smooth. <laughs> So catchy. Oh, it's that thing he does. Ugh. Voices. Dang, he is so good. I just love the slides. I love everything about Randy Rhodes' playing. Let's just put it that way. It's so creative. I like the way he does slides, the pitch choices, um, the phrasing choices, the way they tumble over often in unexpected directions. And at the same time, it, it really plays with emotions as well. Oh, it's really, really good. interesting use of orchestral backing instruments here. Um, I can hear them moving from different parts of the headphones and um, it's almost like that swirl has continued using those instruments and by placing them in different uh, areas of the headphones we're essentially saying you know it almost feels like the madman is dealing with schizophrenia. Sounds like a cello over here right now. Now, maybe a violin that's popping in over here. So I like the way he has a little holler at the end of free, uh, gives that tormented feel a little bit more. And then the choral parts here are interesting. And I think we're back to that seven, eight temp or time signature. And you can tell it feels really disjointed when we've gotten back to, at one point we just had lots of like probably a six, eight, a one, two, three, four, five, six feeling. And that felt a lot more normal and stable, right? But now we've gotten to this section and added the voices to it. And it feels suddenly very unstable. <laughs> sure we're really in seven eight I think we might have just added like a little a couple extra beats in there yeah 
there's a time signature switch in there. My hunch, I think probably how they wrote it is that they did a 5-8 measure with a 6-8 measures on either sides, which is why it suddenly feels totally disjunct. Very interesting how they've played with time signatures in here and very, very appropriate once again for that madman feel. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool ending. I deeply appreciate the compositional aspects of this song, especially the solo for Mandy Rhodes is purely fantastic too. I really, really wish that he had lived a long life and had contributed tons more to music. It's so sad that he died so early, but just shout out to everyone involved in making this track. I think it's extremely valuable to hear how they made that madman feel using time signatures, using different kinds of colors and the lyrics. It has something very real and important, I think, for all of us to take away from it. If you'd like to hear some more analysis of some Aussie, there's a playlist over here, and I hope to see you somewhere soon.